Let me go ahead and get started. Um, about one, so uh, don't be confused by the zero fatality stuff. We're not from zero fatalities, <laughs> uh, but feel free to take their stuff you want. I will stop it. Um, we are from Lexicon, uh, more form or more familiarly known as Street Smarts. Um, so I'm Carter Oki. Over here is Brett Paulson. Uh, so we work together. And so with the uh, Street Smarts, we work with high schools across the state, uh, with probably many of you, to, uh, to provide a supplemental driving uh, training course, a defensive driving training course. Um, I've been with LegCon for about three years now. Um, it's, been, it's been a great experience. It's, uh, it's a great opportunity to work with a lot of you on a daily basis, as well as with the students across the state on a daily basis. Um, and it's just a, it's a great group of people to be working with. Um, so just an introduction to Street Smarts for anybody who's not familiar with it, to kind of give you some background. Uh, it's an online training program. It's supplemental to the driver's ed program. So it's not something that's like meant to replace any of the teaching you do. It's just supplemental as like an assignment. Uh, it's about four hours in length. And so what the course really does is it's simulation based. So the students are going to go in there and be run through scenarios. Um, as they go through the scenarios, it's areas where collisions and accidents happen the most frequently. So it gives them instruction, then it puts them through a practice scenario, shows them uh, what they should do, and then tests them on it as they make decisions. So things like recognizing hazards on the, on the roadway or um, judging safe distance when they should be turning left, some of the things that aren't as um, intuitive when they get behind the wheel, but it gives them that opportunity to have some real world-ish experience without having the danger of actually being behind the wheel. Uh, so when they complete Street Smarts, that four hours of simulation time counts as one hour of drive time with an instructor. Um, and like I said, it provides that realistic experience. That's really the idea is to try to get them uh, sort of a head start before they're um, really behind the wheel and, and in danger to say. <clears throat> Um, so last year I was able to speak at this conference, we did it virtually, and what I spent my time on is basically just an overview of the Street Smarts program. So I want to review a lot of the things here to get started, but then I, I'm going to go into some of the content of one of the courses later on, or one of the lessons. Uh, but to start with the review of, of Street Smarts, and this uh, is going to be a little bit geared towards the teachers or the instructors that are using Street Smarts to give you some of the best practices, or just the, um, the problem areas that we're seeing with students, uh, just to maybe help those pain points be easier for you. So number one, uh, one of the, probably the most common thing we get from students when they're reaching out to us, is they're forgetting their username and password. And I know a lot of you are probably experiencing that. So their username and password should <clears throat> always be their student number. Um, so if they are, if they come to you and they've forgotten it, have them first try their student number for both of those. If at that point it's still not working, it means one of two things. It means they either put in something besides their student number and then forgot it. They put in whatever number, their phone number, their birthday or something wrong. Um, if that's the case, have them message into us and then we'll help them get that set correctly. Or the other situation may be that they're at the wrong training site. Uh, they could be at our other training site, which is aside from Street Smarts. Sometimes one way or another, that link gets passed around. So have them double check what link they're at. It should be streetsmarts.com.onqsafety. And that'll be on the instruction sheet that you have. Um, and if you don't know what I'm talking about with the instruction sheet, feel free to send me an email, reach out to me at any point in time. Uh, with a lot of these things, if, if they sound confusing, email me and, and we'll get it straightened out. Um, so the other issue that comes up a lot, and this has to kind of go hand in hand with username and passwords, is duplicate accounts. So what students will do is they don't want to spend the time to try to figure out what their username and password is to their account. So they just make another one with whatever they feel like saying at the time. So strongly advise your students against this. This will confuse things with licenses. It will confuse things with reporting. Um, they'll have several accounts in the system, all with different amounts of progress done in the course. Uh, so if we can avoid that in any way possible, tell them do not create another account. A good indicator of this is if they go to sign up and it says your 
your username and password are already used or your student ID is already used, that means they probably already have an account. There have been a few rare cases where maybe a student from a different school happens to have the same student ID. That's only come up maybe two or three times in the years that we've done this. Um, so if they, and again, if it gets to a point where it's still confusion, have them message in through the support button. I'll show you, I'll show you in a screenshot here um, where that's at. So here is what the signup page looks like. This is the best spot for the students to reach out to us. So this blue message icon, uh, that one's the one that works most uh, instantly, and it doesn't have to try to do anything with their email. We have another support button that's more for teachers, and that uses emails, but we don't use the emails with the students. So that can get a little tech, a little technical. But yeah, that blue, that blue message icon is best for students to reach out. And then just as a background or a review as well, this is the sign up page that students see when they go to sign up for the first time on the right hand side. And so what they'll do to sign up, they'll put in their school district, then their high school, then their teacher. And, and so these last two right here, the teacher and period are customizable for what each of you prefer. Um, if you have several teachers, we can put in every teacher there. Um, or if you just want like one teacher name in there, we can do that. So we'll sign up under the teacher and then they'll put in their period and that's also customizable. A lot of the schools now are just using semesters or quarter or even school year, but we can do anything that works best for you. And then what that does is on the reporting side, that's how it will be broken down. So when you go and view your reports of which students have completed it, uh, it will show by whatever you have broken it down on the site. So that's, that's all customizable to whatever you prefer. Um, and if you want to set things up differently, again, reach out to me through email and we'll get you set up there. Uh, and then finally, the last thing that I wanted to review is just to discuss a little bit about how to access the reports. So there's a few different ways that we have that set up. Um, every instructor is set up with an admin account. So when you log in with your admin account, you have different capabilities than what the students have. The students will just see the course, they won't see any of this. But as an admin, you can go in and to view the report, you wanna click uh, my dashboard. So this first area, arrow, once you click that, it'll take you to this page and there'll be pie charts on the bottom. Uh, each pie chart represents a course in the system. So you'll notice here, this is Street Smarts 2020, 2021. Now there will also be Street Smarts 2021, 2022, and then next year, 2022, 2023. That's how it's kept separate. So you click on the pie chart for the year that you want to see the reports for. And once you click on that, you'll see a list of students, their progress, how long they spent in it. You can also search uh, students by name once you're in there uh, and have all that information. Uh, most of the admins as well, we have it set up to be emailing you, I think either monthly or weekly, depending on uh, what your preference was. <coughs> Uh, if you're not receiving those emails and you'd like to, again, reach out to us and we'll, we'll set you up so you're receiving those emails. And that way you can just get it, uh, the progress report, who's completed that week, every week, if you don't want to go in here. Is there some reason why we could get the real safety email once a week, but not the simulator? Um, if you're just doing the real safety course, if you were doing Street Smarts too, then we just probably need to sign you up for it. Oh, okay. I'll um, you. Okay. Yeah. And then that being said, that's a thank you for bringing that up at that point. Um, if you're not using Street Smarts, you still might be familiar with this because we've uh, this year been doing the rail safety course on our platform as well. So we actually have the rail safety course in our LMS, which all, all schools in the state are using, um, as well as the driver's examiner course has been on our LMS too. So this system might look familiar between one of the three things. Um, so that being said, any questions about uh, Street Smarts is the program, how to use it as an administrator, anything like that before I move on to sort of the content portion of it. Okay. Um, and if any questions come up anytime, feel free to, to uh, interrupt. So to shift gears a little bit, uh, what I wanna do as part of uh, this presentation today is discuss a little bit about one of the modules that's within uh, Street Smarts. Uh, and I want to do this for a number of reasons. Um, I know a lot of times you're busy and you're not able to actually go through and, and look at what the students are going through. Uh, so this will be kind of a peek into the course and the course material. Um, and as I do this, uh, I want to maybe to look at it in a few different ways. Uh, one, just as a driver yourself to see if there's anything that you could pick up 
to take into your own life as you go and driving. Uh, two, think of how you can maybe help students uh, if you're doing driving sessions with them. Uh, there's some tools and some different questions and things that may be applicable there uh, that you can uh, start using. And then three, just within your life, uh, as you see, you know, your friends or family, there's some, some tools and some uh, different procedures that I talk about that could be effective there as well. So the attention distraction module is one of the six modules that's in the course. And traditionally it's had two, uh, two lessons within that module. Recently we added a third, which is gonna be the main portion of what I talked about today. But I wanted to go over the first two lessons, what's in, in those portions of the course. So it, it talks about attention distraction, which of course is very important and prominent thing among teens that are easily distracted. Uh, so the areas it touches on is avoidable versus unavoidable. It helps them distinguish between the two. So, you know, your radio is something that maybe is avoidable to be distracted by that, but unavoidable would be like a billboard or uh, animals on the side of the road. It talks about road rage. Uh, within the course, there's a, a uh, highway patrolman that discusses the ins and outs of road rage, what to do if someone's experiencing road rage towards you. Um, it talks about texting, it has a little bit of a gamification to show how difficult multitasking is shows, you know, it's, it's not something that you can focus on the road uh, as well as focusing on your phone or other things that come up. And then of course, drowsiness uh, discusses that really the only way around drowsiness is to get more sleep. Uh, you know, there's not enough caffeine or loud music out there to make you a safe driver if you're tired. Uh, so that's traditionally what's been in the attention distraction module. And recently we added a, a new lesson which is focusing on mental distraction. So uh, at Lectone, we've actually partnered with a company called Blue Novice. Uh, and this is a company that has uh, trained therapists on staff. They, they specialize in emotional well being uh, with, with different organizations and help provide support in that way. And we've partnered with them to create this lesson. Um, and so to give you an idea about some of the things that teens are experiencing within the realm of mental health or emotional well-being, I pulled some of these, uh, just these facts out of a survey that was done by the Utah Department of Human Services. So it showed that fewer students reported getting at least eight hours of sleep a night due to different stressors or anxiety they're experiencing. Students are having increased feelings of social isolation. I'm sure that's not a surprise to anyone with the state of the climate of the world the last few years. Uh, and then there's been increased uh, high to moderate mental health treatment needs among, among teens in the state. So it is something that is very prevalent. Uh, we've seen a need for it, which is why we wanted to create this course. Um, as it does, it does carry over into driving. Um, and that being said, if, if a person is mentally distracted, they're, they're up to 10 times more likely to be in a collision or an accident. So what the core of this course discusses, or this lesson discusses, is the steering safely pre-driving evaluation. And this is sort of a tool to use before getting behind the wheel. Uh, you can see the steps here. Steps are identify, process, manage, assess, and act. So this, this evaluation can be as simple or as detailed as it needs to be, really. Um, it can be something like, am I feeling okay right before you get in the car? And that's it if you are feeling okay, but if you're not feeling okay and you have different distractions going on with whatever may be going on in your life, each of these steps may become more and more detailed and the process may become a little bit more intricate. Um, so I'm going to go through each step uh, and talk about what each of those looks like. Um, and then I'll even on step three, there's some uh, video I want to share that explains, explains some tools to use. Um, but one thing you'll notice kind of as a pattern is that a lot of these steps, part of the process is asking questions out loud. And that maybe sounds like kind of a silly thing to do, um, but it's one of the best ways to uh, interpret your feelings and take them from what's in your mind to an understanding out in front of you. Uh, so before driving, step one is to identify emotions. So this scale is just kind of used as uh, like a visual aid. And th these are the areas where you're probably more safe to be driving but as you get towards either end of the scale, it's when it can start to become more dangerous. So one way to narrow down the emotions is by asking 
just simple questions like, how am I feeling right now? That's how you would do it um, yourself if you were about to drive or a team would do it themselves if they're about to drive. But when you're getting behind the, within the car in a driving session with your students, this is something that you could incorporate there as well. Obviously, it's going to be a nerve wracking situation for the first time they're driving with their instructor. So just asking them and, and getting it out in the open and helping them kind of identify those emotions, saying, how are you feeling right now? Are you feeling a little nervous? And addressing that, saying it's OK to be nervous um, can make a big difference for them, because if they feel like they shouldn't be or if they don't feel comfortable, uh, it can make things a lot more difficult. But showing as an instructor, showing them to identify those emotions can help them set a good practice for when they're driving alone to then identify emotions when they're on their own. The next step uh, comes pretty naturally. So once those emotions are identified, it's important to process them. So this is sort of when you take the emotions, so you say, you know what, I'm not feeling great. I'm feeling pretty anxious right now. Or I'm feeling pretty nervous right now. This is where you're trying to understand why you're feeling that way. So again, the, the step here is to try to understand the who, what, where, and why. And it doesn't have to be um, each of these questions, but asking questions like that to yourself or to the student uh, helps to then understand where those emotions are coming from. And it becomes more important as you move on to managing those emotions to understand the, the, um, the point where it came from originally. Uh, so in this situation, if you maybe ask the student in the first step to identify their emotions, saying, how do you feel? And they tell you you feel nervous. The next step, it's pretty simple. It would just be, well, why are you feeling nervous? What makes you feel nervous? Are you scared that you're going to do a bad job? Um, that can help to then bring to the next step, which is to manage those emotions. Um, so the goal when we're managing, we're taking what we found in the first two steps and trying to bring it to a calm and stable state. So basically on that meter, you want to bring it to an aligned state. So there's some tools that you can use to do this, uh, such as breathing techniques, mindfulness, or cognitive reframing and restructuring. Uh, that being said, I'm no mental health expert. So I'm actually just gonna show a video from the course directly that explains these tools. Uh, so you can see firsthand uh, what exactly to do in those situations. Uh, I'll go ahead and play that. Manage your emotions. To effectively respond to your emotions, you will want to use emotional tools and techniques to help get yourself back into a calm and stable state for safe driving. The first tool is deep breathing. Deep breathing is a well-documented and simple technique to help you manage your emotional state in any situation. Deep breathing can decrease your blood pressure and slow your heart rate to reduce your feelings of anxiety and help you reestablish emotional stability. Here's how it works. Take a slow, deep breath in for six seconds and concentrate on your lungs filling with air. Hold the breath for five seconds and then feel yourself exhale for three seconds. Do it again and imagine breathing in the emotion you are feeling and then exhaling it out, allowing yourself to let go of the emotion. Then take one more deep breath now that you have let go of the emotion. Let's give it a try together. sure why it's uh, jumping around, <laughs> but basically this is just a practice that's included within the course. Um, so knowing that this is included in there as well, uh, your students have already seen these tools that they've gone through Street Smarts. So this can be a good thing to remind them of is, you know, if it is a situation where they are in a deeply anxious state or deeply stressed out or nervous state to bring up this tool uh, as an idea to help them calm back down. See if I can maybe just fast forward to it. Now on the second tool, mindfulness. It is important to be mindful, which means being aware of your current emotional state and physical surroundings. 
practicing the ability to mindfully observe your emotions instead of being caught up in those emotions will create space between you and the emotions you feel and will help you make decisions that are more aligned with your values. Now take a moment to remember you are about to drive, which involves sending thousands of pounds down the road with the push of a pedal. It's a big responsibility. Are you ready? And last, the third tool, reframing or restructuring. Cognitive reframing or restructuring means talking to yourself to remind you where you are, who you are with, where you are going, and that you will be okay. Recognize that these uncomfortable emotions are temporary and will pass. Take time to calm yourself and focus on the task at hand, driving. Okay, so that, uh, like I said, that's directly out of the course itself, um, some tools. And, and these are gonna be for situations where uh, it may be a little bit more serious of a mental distraction. If someone's feeling very anxious or very nervous, the deep breathing techniques are, it's something that is universal. It doesn't have to do with just getting ready to drive anytime someone's feeling in a state like that, uh, as well as the mindfulness and reframing and restructuring. Now, applying that to maybe when you're in a driving session with a student, how that could be uh, applied there would be to just remind them, you know, take that conversation again that we've been having and say, how are you feeling right now? Are you feeling nervous? And they say, yeah, I'm feeling nervous. Well, why do you feel nervous? That would be step two, processing. They may say, well, I want to get a good score. I, I'm really nervous I'm going to fail. Or if I don't get, if I don't pass, my mom's going to be so mad at me. Then this is where step three would come in. And, you know, in that situation, it may not be something where you need to do deep breathing with them, but reframing and restructuring might look something like, well, look, you're okay. You're here. You're going to do a good job. You're ready for this. You've taken the class. You've done everything to prepare. So don't be nervous. I, I'll be right here with you to help you along the way. And that's just a simple way that that process can go uh, to help them feel more comfortable and, and sort of ease their nerves um, as they're doing that. So that brings to step four, which is assess. Uh, now this can kind of seem a little bit similar to step two, because again, it's, it's a lot of questions you might be asking. But the difference here is when you're assessing, it's more about making sure that you're in a good state to then make the right action, as opposed to asking questions to process what it is that's going on. So now you're basically trying to decide, am I, am I fit to drive? Am I fit to be doing whatever I'm about to do? Um, so some of the questions that are examples here, I have here, um, have I fully identified, processed, and managed my emotions? How am I feeling? Am I safe to drive? The one I want to highlight too is, do I need to call someone uh, and talk to someone before I drive? Uh, a lot of times, this could be a good thing to, to mention to students that if they're feeling feelings of anxiousness, nervousness, anger, whatever it may be, sometimes it could be a good idea to call a friend or a loved one before they get behind the wheel just talk things out and get, it, get their mind right before they actually take on the responsibility to drive. Uh, it's important to, in this stage, hold yourself accountable to the state of emotion that you're in. Uh, if you're not fit to drive, sometimes it can be a hard thing to, to make that decision, but this is what assess, assessing is all about. And it doesn't have to be the end here. Sometimes when you reach to these last two steps, uh, it's important you can go right back to the beginning and start over and try to work through it again until you are in the right state of mind. Uh, so that brings us to step five, which is to act responsibly. Once you've assessed your emotional state or the state, uh, you know, for the students as they've assessed their emotional state to make the correct decisions based off of, of the practices taught. Um, and the reason that I think this is such an important step is because, you know, if you were to tell someone who had been drinking that it's not safe for them to drive. No one would probably blink twice at that, but it's not really in the same uh, conversation to say, hey, you're, you don't seem like you're in a good enough mental state to drive. Uh, that might be a, a different conversation than we've heard before, but it really is in that same conversation. If, if you're not in the right mental state to be taking on that responsibility, it's okay to change your plans. Uh, and that's something that I think it can also be incorporated with these students to explain to them is, it's not just drinking and driving or texting and driving, but if you are not in a state of 
mental focus or mental stability, uh, you can change your plans. Maybe ask someone else to give you a ride or go back inside for 30 <coughs> minutes and take a breather before you get behind the wheel. <coughs> and I want to actually share um, an experience I had recently to kind of give a real world example of where this might come up. Uh, I was, so I live up in Utah County um, and I was driving on I-15 with my wife and we were having an emotionally charged conversation, uh, not about each other, we weren't <laughs> arguing, but um, we were talking about someone in our life who had kind of been doing some stuff to upset us. Uh, so I was getting a little bit worked up. Uh, and as I was doing this, I was losing focus on the road. I was turning more to her. She really wasn't paying attention. And I hadn't noticed that the traffic in front of me had come to almost a stop. It slowed down. And uh, by the time I noticed, she, you know, she warned me. I looked up. And luckily, I was able to slow down enough and swerve out of the lane and avoid uh, rear-ending them. Uh, but it was a close call. And it was definitely one of those hard-stopping moments that uh, – one of those oh-crap moments, really. And uh, it's easy to look at that and say, okay, what was the distraction there? It was my wife because I was talking to her. But in reality, I have conversations with people in the car every day. It's, it's a very normal thing. The distraction is that my mental state was not stable. I was thinking so deeply about how angry I was at this person. And uh, I was so caught up in that part of it that I wasn't focused on the road anymore. And I think there's a lot of situations like this that actually apply where we may mistake one distraction where it could actually be several. So maybe even talking on the phone with someone, that's the easy distraction to see is, oh, well, they're talking on the phone, that's a distraction, but really they're in a conversation with their boyfriend and they're breaking up. And that can also add to it. They're not in a mental state to be focused on the road. So again, uh, sort of to implement, as far as implementation to conclude, uh, hopefully, there's some things from within this lesson that uh, you can take into your own life, into your own instruction, and, and add in um, not only to make the instruction sessions when you're driving with students a better experience for them, but to help prepare them for down the road when they're on their own and they're in these situations so that they kind of have an idea of how to uh, handle these situations themselves. Um, Again, also don't be afraid to use the tools we discussed today. Uh, everybody that is using Street Smarts, you have the ability to go in and look at the course. So if you do want to go and look at the deep breathing technique again, or be reminded about the mindfulness or restructuring techniques, you can go in there. It won't be weird and jumpy like that video was. I'm not sure what the issue was there, but um, those are great management tools to have in your tool belt as an instructor, but also just in your daily life, um, as we have, you know, loved ones and family and friends that uh, go through go through mental uh, mental health issues. Uh, to have those available are it's kind of like mental first aid. Um, then finally, like I said before, I'm not a mental health expert by any means. Um, I I do driving training online. That's what I do for my job. But uh, so it's a difficult thing. Sometimes it can feel like, you know, we're inadequate to talk about it or to bring it up. Um, but really these small things we've discussed today, these small tools, asking some questions just to open the conversation can make a big difference uh, for the, the lives of the people around us, uh, for the students um, and for ourselves. Uh, so hopefully from what I said, there was something that you can take away today. Uh, and then just to finish off, I want to open up again for any questions or comments. Do you have any comments about anything we discussed? Um, yeah. Um, just to kind of go off what Carter just said so that you're aware of these lessons and how they're built. Carter is right. He's not a mental health therapist. He's not a psychologist. We have a trained psychiatrist and psychologist on our staff. So as Carter said, we partner with a group called Blue Novus. And so we have mental health professionals on our staff who are building this type of content so it's not like a bunch of sales guys and other people are building this mental health content it's this has been built by professionals who are accredited through national institutions um, and we actually have a relationship with the state of utah because we do business with our first responders here so we just won a grant with the state of utah to supply peer-to-peer -peer 
um, support the first responder agencies, fire departments, police departments. And in doing this and working with the chiefs of police over at West Jordan, uh, the chief over at Utah Highway Patrol and other entities, we're talking to them a lot about what's going on with the mental health of not only their officers and people that they have on the roads, but everyone like civilians in general on the roads right now. And UHP is seeing a really high increase in road rage in the last year and a half, really high increase in uh, speeding, excessive speeding over 100 miles an hour related to road rage. And it's all stems from mental health. And so training these young kids on this topic, for us adults, it seems, of course, I'm going to check my I'm going to check my emotional state before I get in the car. I do it just kind of, that's how I do things. It comes naturally. And I also have been driving for so many years that it's not a big deal, right? That's how we all feel. But these young teenagers, they are learning how to develop themselves as people. And so mental health is a topic for them that we need to start getting them to think a little bit more about before they do get behind heavy machinery and get behind something that can, that can hurt and kill people. We want to make sure that they're in a state that they feel comfortable doing that. And if we can get behind the wheel, like Carter is saying, and just you know, remind them of these simple tricks, which I know you guys have been doing for years. So this is nothing new to you, but um, just remember that we are trying to support you in, in delivering this message. And this new added uh, course come, came highly recommended. And so we decided to implement it. And again, we have a psychologist who built the course for us. It wasn't Carter, it wasn't myself. It was a trained professional who built it. So it's good content. Yeah. Um, one other thing that I forgot to mention earlier on, uh, just to go in addition to talking about the, the sign up page here. So if, uh, if anybody virtually or here in uh, the room today uh, isn't currently using Street Smarts and you have interest, if you're kind of wondering what that process looks like to get started, uh, we can easily add your, well, at this point, because of rail safety, all the school districts are already preloaded into our system. So we can add your school, we can add your, uh, your name as a teacher and all your information usually takes us less than a day to get you up and running and uh, ready to go with Street Smarts. Uh, and then you can talk with Brett or I to get worked out with like, Pricing and all the things that, that go there. Um, we've got some cards, uh, I think, out on our vendor booth table just for our contact info if you don't already have it. Um, but it is right here as well. Uh, right there. You can email me at carter at lexicon.com or you can reach out through that phone number. Uh, we'll be happy to just talk you through it, uh, let you know what the options are and basically how to get set up if you're interested in that. Uh, but yeah, thanks again, everybody, for coming in here, uh, listening to the presentation. Uh, we're always grateful to do this. It's a good experience to come to these conferences and get to interact with you. I know I email so many of you on like a monthly basis, maybe get sick of seeing my face pop up on the stream, but uh, it's good to see you in person. And if you have any questions and you want to talk today, we'll be out at the vendor booth as well. You can come and talk to us. Thank you. Carter.